good match. It's gotta be. In the bottom left hand corner in the orange. We have our turn player from FXO. He is Gumiho. If you guys are not too familiar, he is the more aggressive. You know, I <laughs> I felt like uh, just looking up a recent game that Gumiho had played, and oh, and it was an SCV Marine all in. I was just like, never <laughs> mind. I, I know him. Of course. <laughs> His opponent in the top right hand corner, guys. The man who pioneered, actually. The Double Forge strategy. You can find a number of his builds on sc2dojo.com. Uh, is it a Tumblr? I think it's a Tumblr.com. Uh, but just Google sc2dojo. Great blog that Artosis put together. Presenting to you here from Team Prime, he is creator. That's right. Uh, two very, very talented players. Um, creator, a little bit more, how shall I say, consistent, I suppose, than Kumiho has. Gumiho, of course, rose to success uh, quickly through the GSL a while ago, made it into the semifinals very quickly, then almost as fast shot out of Kodes, uh, down through Kode, and uh, was out of GSL for a little while. Since then, though, he's kind of regained his form. He's back to being just obnoxious in team leagues, walks in, and uh, more often than not, you can expect him to get a three or a four kill. So he's incredibly annoying there, and now he's starting to find success back in individual leagues again. So Creator, though, has always kind of floated around as a very consistent high-level player. Maybe not uh, appearing in the finals or anything like that of a GSL, but always a threat at any given point in time, hence his second place finish at the World Championship Series. Yeah, he does tend to have somewhat of a predictable play style, and so sometimes you run into somebody that just counters that play style so incredibly well. And although uh, you may fall to them, it does not by any means mean that you are uh, not a top contender player. It's just, you know, you have this very different play style that some players tend to counter, and you can't really adapt too far from that creator, you know, just... Well, we do see him go for other strategies from time to time. Sure. He certainly is not always relying on that Devil Forge, but I do expect to see a fair quantity of it here. That said, let's go back to a series of uh, parting, actually, versus Lenok, was it? Where yeah. he didn't do a single Immortal Sentry all in. That's right. It, was a it happens. Mind-boggling. We think he was saving those builds for WCS at the time, possibly mm -hmm. when he played it, uh, because um, you know, I think it was actually against Hyun, but because uh, it was right when WCS yes, was because happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, was, I felt like the time frame was messed up for Lenox. So yeah, it was. But I remember Hyun, what you're saying. Yeah, we all expected. Oh, he's gonna Immortal Sentry all in. We're gonna see this, and Hyun's finally gonna go down. Nope, never did it. And then of course, Immortal, immortal Sentry all in over and over and over and over again at WCS, and, and took the whole thing. <laughs> So, uh, all right, Creator is going to be kicking things off here with um, a Nexus. It looks like the Cybercore has just gone down about halfway down at this point, and he's chronoing out a Zealot. Uh, with the Chrono Boost, we'll be letting that Zealot finish. It's actually very convincing. Sometimes we do see players queue the Zealot, cancel it once the SCV leaves in this situation. That guy's going to come out. Uh, in fact, he makes a second Zealot behind this. Um, we've got Gumiho, on the other hand. Looking yeah. like he's going to get some nice early gases here. He start drop two already, Kev. Yeah, he uh, decided to go for a one rex gasless fast expand, put down a second barracks double gas behind that. So I, I would expect that, and this is just uh, assuming based on who Gumiho is and the opponent he's playing. Now we're going to see a lot of uh, either aggressive two base play, or we're going we're, games are going to go one of two ways. Either Gumiho is going to get in, he's going to kill his opponent very early before Creator can really set off on that nice uh, macro route, or we're going to see games kind of delay and go really, 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 really long. Yeah. I mean, Gumiho, um, he'll, he'll be able to play with some sort of greed in the, in the uh, games where he doesn't go for some really early game pressure. Where Creator is going to be playing this more balanced style, he needs to make sure that he's safe against the pressure that Gumiho will possibly be laying on him. And, you know, one of the things that actually got me into uh, Diamond League, for example, when I first picked up my copy of StarCraft, Kevin, I was reading through some stuff, and I saw somebody make the comparison of rock, paper, scissors. You know, I've been an RTS player ever since Outpost 2 in 1997, I think it was. Wow. Um, and, you know, I, I've been playing these games for a while, but I never really made the connection that a lot of RTS games boil down to, uh, you know, if you're playing very greedy, you lose to the aggressive player. If you're playing very balanced, you defeat the aggressive player, you lose to the, the greedy player. And if you're playing as the aggressor, you will defeat the greedy one, but you will lose to the balanced. And it's this nice little game where everybody counters everybody in this little triangle. And, well, with Gumiho's aggression, we may see Creator play a little more balanced. Gumiho could take advantage of that and play himself quite greedy. Well, already Creator's doing something a little bit atypical for him. We see him jumping up to five gates very early on. We're not seeing that traditional three-gate robo-play, establish those forges, move up through the tech tree, things like that. 
Uh, now, this could very well be a response to what he thinks will happen from Gumiho. He's gotten, let's see what his scout is so far. He hasn't really seen anything, to be honest. Yeah. He doesn't have a good idea that Gumiho actually gunned it straight for Starport. Two racks into Starport right afterwards. It's about as quick as you can get it off of two bases. Um, and that Gumiho is going for that quick strike, but it's going to play out really well in his favor because he already has the units prepared for this. Yeah, he does. He opened, of course, with the two barracks instead of just the one when you gun it for that double refinery behind it so you can make your way to Starport very quickly. His medevacs are, are going to be starting up here. They're going to be popping out uh, just a few seconds after 8.30, which is actually when, well, the stim is a little bit slower, notably. That's one of the things here that's slightly later, but his medevacs are almost perfectly on time here. Uh, if he has a reactor, actually, I don't know that he does not have a reactor with this build. He could have switched it with his barracks, but simply it looks it wouldn't, um, is favoring more marines here. Regardless, some units being killed off toward, in fact, a supply block there as a pylon goes down. There's actually a really good opportunity for Creator to engage us within the next minute because Stimpak is not even close to being done. So Creator off of these five gates could do some serious pressure right now. Mm -hmm. And he has enough stalkers back at home always prepared for the counter aggression as Gumiho is not going to be able to do all that much. In fact, just giving up that as he prepares to defend back at home. The SCVs have already been pulled and Gumiho is ready to pull back on up to this bunker on the high ground. Now he will have to lift the command center here. So that's going to be a substantial amount of economic damage that has been dealt to Gumiho at this point. Prime Creator going to be pushing up the ramp, targeting down the supply depot in the front, but there is a lot of meat here for Gumiho to eat these shots. SCV is coming off the line as well to help repair some structures, but I don't think Creator is quite going to be able to bust up this ramp. Now, Creator just lost a bunch of Zealots there, and that's not the worst deal in the world in terms of uh, what he's lost out of his army. Gumiho already setting up for a drop. Big surprise there. Um, you know, he's going to keep this pressure on, but the real disadvantage, of course, is that Creator's so far behind tech-wise. And if this attack gets stopped right here, then he is going to have an extremely difficult time uh, in the later stages of this game. But now he just wants to move up and kill Gumiho. Well, he's getting a lot of damage in right now, Kev, but the medevac is on the field repairing a lot of these units. Hellion's getting some nice splash in as well. Marauder stimming for all that's left is Stalker. Still three Marauders remain, and Gumiho is going to push Creator Prime back down the ramp once again. Right, but now Creator's starting to do some real damage. He's got an opening where he can actually make his way into the main. He's continuing his warping cycles, and he's not taking any damage himself. And more importantly, his opponent's just on one base economy at the moment. Well oversaturated one base economy at that. So uh, Creator's done some very real damage here, and if Gumiho holds this off, he's not in the worst of spots. Just awesome uh, medevac micro right there, by the way, picking up that hurt unit and dropping him at the back. Of course, that's kind of Gumi Ho's, uh, that's his sign, that's what he does. Oh, wasn't it though? He was doing it in the middle of combat as well, hiding those Marauders in the medevac, so Creator thought he had a significant advantage in that engagement, when really, three Marauders do pretty damn well versus five Stalkers. As we can see, Gumi Ho is going to be fending this off, but another warp in here, a Sentry, three more Zealots, and a Stalker for Creator. All right, so Creator already opening the set with something very atypical of him, going for heavy, heavy aggression. He's trying to take up back at home now, put down the Forge and the Twilight Council, so he has a response out of this. But as we can see, Gumiho is getting a little bit stronger with every single push. He is, but he's lost a lot of economy behind all this. His tech is in very good order with the Marine, Marauder, Medivac, Hellion composition. Thick, diverse, excellent. Creator has those five gateways, but as you pointed out, he's just now teching up. However, let's look at the natural expansion of Creator. It is quite flourishing indeed. We can see probes going about their busy work, gathering pollen. On the other side of the map, Gumiho. Well, as barren as the Sahara. So. Just being started right now again. Yep. Uh, now, here's the cool thing about this game, though. Even if Creator ends up losing this game, he's... Uh, you, you talk about the mind games. It's always the uh -huh. mind games. Creator opened up with a strategy that was totally atypical of him. Heavy aggression. And Gumiho had designed a build that was prepared to disrupt uh, Creator's normal strategy. Get him with two medevacs incredibly early, kill off that third base, stop Colossus' and production, some something like for that. a natural run by. Perfect. Yes, exactly. So that was a very clever way to open up this game. And Creator basically said, no, 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 no. I know you're going to try and do something like that. I know you're going to disrupt what I normally do. Here's a build so you won't know what to expect going from here on out. Well, Hellion Drop is going to uh, have lackluster results as that medevac does retreat. There are a couple of units up towards the top. Is that a pylon and a probe? No, it's a pylon and a zealot. Actually, that zealot's going to be making its way toward the third base of Gumiho. Quite aptly predicted here by Creator. He will drop his own third nexus in response. That's right, but this could actually just uh, basically get instigated, especially if Afix of Gumiho waits. Okay, no, he did actually start firing on it as soon oh, as Oh, but it still gets taken wow. out, Creator. Obviously a little bit taxed. 
Meanwhile, some Hellions are actually going into the natural. They're going to get a couple volleys off on these probes that lined up, but no! The hero probe saves the day by A-walking into the mineral line, doing a beautiful job there, and Gumiho doesn't get in the damage that he could have there against Creator. Falls so his comrades will succeed. Um, Gumiho, though, he has actually had this command center delayed for a really long period uh -huh. of time. The Zealot has stopped this during that entire engagement, and uh, that's actually going to give Creator uh, a significant, not, not an advantage here, but he's only going to be about 50 seconds behind on the construction of his command center. Uh, Gumiho thinking about dropping in, but you don't do that against Creator. Creator's ready for this with a pack of Stalkers. This has been uh, really, really interesting between these two players. You know, Creator, of course, losing all those units in the beginning, but delaying an incredible amount of mining time. And in fact, killing quite a unit, uh, a series of units out of uh, Gumiho as well. 17 workers killed throughout the course of that game, most of them at that uh, push up into the main. See here is but a uh, big drop in the main base right now. Stutter stepping forward. Gumiho is going to be taken down. Whatever units are here, trying to blink away the stalkers, but they don't have anywhere to blink to. Kevin, yeah. this is not Antigua Shipyard. It is in fact Daybreak, and they cannot blink over any ledges. Gumiho going to get an escape. That, escape free. that was a super sick maneuver by Creator right there, though. And he actually stops the attack of the third with incredible force field placement. So he perfectly micro two groups of forces. I got to give a hand to Creator right there. All hope seemed lost for a lot of those stalkers, but he actually blinked back to the perfect position right behind those zealots. So they continued to do damage, but weren't within the range of the Marines that were up at the front. That was disgusting. That really was. I, I was, <laughs> to an extent, I, I, honestly, as a commentator, it's kind of on autopilot there. You're like, no, yeah. those units are dead. But his control was actually so incredible that, well, very few units, in fact, died. That was really good stuff out of Creator. Uh, already in game number one, we're kind of seeing the best out of these players. Just fantastic control so I'm, far. I'm stunned that those stalkers didn't <laughs> I die. Know. And add on top of that, Gumiho didn't die to that first push from Creator. I mean, this yeah. is really cool stuff. So both players are on three bases now. The gas is obviously just getting started for Creator. Um, they'll finish up here in a second. He'll be able to add on to his forces. Finally, we see Colossus production. But already, Gumiho, because, uh, you know, he's been, he's been relatively untouched for most of this game now after that initial push at the beginning. Uh, we'll talk about that after this uh, little poke in here from Creators. He's trying to bait those forces back potentially to the rest of his units here. Um, Gumiho is now preparing for all high-tech eventualities that'll come out of Creator. Ghost Academy and plus one weapons for his ships on the way. Mm -hmm. All right, we got charge lots trying to get what damage they can in here. The medevacs are not going to be able to use this as an escape a mechanism. Creator will be able to blink for it. Actually, blinks to the side right now. Very nice control here out of Gumiho, not taking yeah. excessive amounts of damage. Look at how he's microing the right side, then the left independently to manipulate the positioning of those elves. But now a Colossus is going to join the battle, and that will spell it hit on this side of the field for Gumiho. He's going to clean up whatever he can towards the end of that engagement, but still a good substantial number of units left here for Creator. All right, so now Creator's in a fairly comfortable position. He defeats the vast majority of his opponent's forces. Yes, there's a fourth base coming up for Gumiho, but there is going to be a moment where he'll be susceptible to any sort of pressure. Um, and as we can see, you know, Creator, he's got all of his tech paths planned out. He's on pretty decent upgrades. Looks like he's going to be on actually just one three, I think that is. Yeah, so, so they're essentially on even upgrades at the moment, just different ones. Yeah, the Forge is kicking in a little bit later, but overall having uh, the, mostly the same effect as you get some Archons in there. It does diminish the value, uh, value of Shields upgrades, uh, excuse me, the Archon upgrades, upgrade, yeah. of course. Um, and the Colossus benefit a little more off weapons. But overall, uh, relatively the same. Ghosts are nearing on the field here in just a second as the Mobius reactor research is getting ready to complete. But Creator's not going to give Gumiho a lot of time for that. In fact, I don't think this planetary is going to have a chance to finish. And Gumiho's thinking about going around the back here. He's not even planning on engaging this force. So the command center is forced to lift. It's actually going to be lit on fire here after just one more volley. There it is. So that's a little bit of a ticking time bomb. And Gumiho actually has nothing here to defend this. But then again, so does Creator. Creator's got nothing, and there's a bunch of stem forces. So we're on full on base straight here in game number one. We are. Are there medevacs with that army? It's going to make a big difference. No. There are not. So the number of stims that these units have available to them are very limited. They've already used two. Some units are going to warp in here for Creator. Third stim out of Gumiho. That takes his units down quite a bit into the red. In fact, these zealots cleaning them up. And Gumiho, although he's equal on supply, is looking to be in a lot of trouble because a huge quantity of that supply is on very, very low health units. He is making four Vikings are dead right now, now. though. He, yeah, he's making four Vikings, so we should be able to repel these colossal Side, but he just has so limited forces back here, it's going to be incredibly difficult to be able to push this back. Sick micro out of the, the Vikings off oh. to the side to get off extra hits, but that's not enough. Creator takes game number one here in this best of nine.
A tight series there. I'm a little surprised to see Kumiho GG out so quickly. The Colossus were actually, uh, the Colossi, there were multiple of them, were firing on tech labs and barracks and miscellaneous structures. He was killing the, the uh, Stalkers, but hey, that's going to tie it up for game number one on Daybreak. I'm sad to see it go so quickly. I, I love yeah. Daybreak, man. <laughs> it's like, the cr it's, it always wanted to be crevasse, but it's just too spacey. <laughs> it's just too spacey. I love that. Um, well, anyway, guys, we're going to move to game number two here in just a second. Of course, that is going to be played on Ohana. Um, this is a best of nine with quite a bit of money on the line, not, uh, $500 for the entire set. Creator has won two weeks of Fight Club in a row, so he has accumulated a $200 bounty on his head. And uh, we actually want to let you guys know again that our awesome $10,000 four-player dice tournament in Las Vegas is going to be next week on Thursday at the Hard Rock Hotel. Uh, we're going to have four players, Acer Scarlet, Azubu Violet, Grubby from team, team Grubby, and Crunty Esports Club's Lucifron will be competing for $10,000 in cash. And you guys are invited for free. So if you want to pick up tickets to that, uh, go ahead and head on over. We just put up a tweet actually uh, releasing all the information uh, about it as well. We have all the information on Facebook, too. But you can go right down yeah. to that link for direct access. Go.itune.com slash Dice IPL. It's guaranteed to be a good event. Yeah. Uh, I know I've said it a few times, but when there's $10,000 on the line for uh, between four players, you know everybody's at the top of their game. And it's free. And it's free. It's free. It's free. What's, what's better than free I just like, I, I mean, as, as a commentator, you know, you yeah. got to enjoy seeing players play at their absolute prime. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Uh, I pretty much, actually, I've, I've told this to a lot of uh, people who will be like, oh, you're being biased. As casters, we're actually just always biased to the person who's playing their best. Even if it's like a, even if you've got like, you know, a no-name player and a, like a pro player that you're a huge fan of, that everybody's a huge fan yeah. of. If the pro player's not, like, not playing at the top of the game, you got this guy who's just like playing so well. You're just like, oh, you're playing so good. Love good StarCraft. We're going to see a lot of it right, dice. Though. Score your free tickets. Get some free tickets to IGN. Yeah, you actually, uh, yeah, if you show up to the event, you have to be there in person. You get free tickets to IPL6, too. Yep. So, all right, guys, we're going to run to a commercial break, and when we get back, it's going to be time for game number two. We'll see if Gumiho can tie it up on Ohana.